Hi, Mary, Christine, Libby. Nice to see you. Hope you guys are good. Very strange day today. I don't know if it's sort of defaulted to autumn. <laughs> Freezing. Yeah, I know. I've got an apron on. I um, got. A, I'm, I'm running out of clothes. You'd think with all the spare time on my hands, I'd be a bit more organised in the house, but it seems to be going to the pack. So I have a pile of washing and a pile of ironing, nothing of which I've dealt with. So <laughs> never mind. Just looking out at the river. It's looking a bit, a bit gloomy, but. Uh, the irises are coming up, so we'll be able to paint those next week. Oh, I got, yeah, I know. It's freezing. It's freezing. Went for a bike ride early morning. Um, there wasn't any mist, so I didn't really take that many photos. But, um, yeah, it was chilly. But it was nice to, nice to get out before the traffic because uh, the roads are a little busier. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, sorry. It's um gosh, yeah, 9 a.m. in Wisconsin. Is that is that's uh central time then, I guess. Maybe. Lovely. It's really good actually. Ha um have any of you been out uh or been trying uh the wildflowers in cold wax? I just wondered. Uh or so or even in watercolors, but using uh using techniques that we've been doing because we're going to be applying a lot of those techniques that we've been doing in the watercolor paintings and the ink paintings today in the cold wax painting so i think you know today's demo really is when it all comes together hi anna oh i hope you're good <laughs> been having a bit of a rough time but nice to see you cape cod oh i'd love to go to cape cod <laughs> And sunny in Switzerland. Yeah, I've got lots of I've got lots of people that have messaged me from Switzerland today, and uh, yeah, they're all out there walking. So um, yeah, so Mary's in Central Time, uh, Lorraine's in Ireland, Christine's in Switzerland, Anna's in Cape Cod, and I'm in Wiltshire. So there we are. <laughs> Anyway, lovely, lovely, lovely to have you here in the studio and also that you're here enjoying cold wax. Hi, Pam. Nice to see you. Uh, that you're uh, trying cold wax. And I noticed that Jackie Blackman is the uh, is the owner of Zested or she, she makes Zested. Uh, products and so anything you want to ask about Zestit uh, you can post them here and um, Jackie will reply to them I noticed she'd reply to some things uh, Katerina had asked about the marble dust yesterday and so uh, that that's quite good and the difference between marble and slate she'll be able to tell you exactly the difference between uh, the substances and how how the um, particles are because there is a difference between marble dust limestone and pumice they're they're all different they all react different so um yeah pumice is a uh, volcanic uh, a, a, volca a, pro a product of volcanoes and it's quite quite sharp pumice but then marble is too they, they act they they act differently i think the reason i like slate um is one because of the soft gray color hi sarah hi danielle uh, the reason I like uh, the slate dust is is the slight grey colour that it has, and I find that really nice to work on. It's very, it's just very pleasant. You can see it. You can see where you've put it down. Anyway, uh, our painting is coming on well. It probably looks a bit at this stage, but what we have is all the different layers coming through, like so, and you can see the dark layers that I've scraped into and I've added a little bit more blue in the sky just to give it some color depth so I felt it was getting just a little too gray and it'll help me pitch the flowers that I'm going to be placing now or well it's not like I'm painting flowers but I just want the impression of walking into a wildflower meadow I really want the sensation of the grass and the pollens 
too early for wildflowers still on daffodils Anne. <laughs> and uh, sorry <laughs> gosh oh my goodness me <laughs> we've already got leaves it's almost autumn here already <laughs> So, you know, I think um, you're thinking about a little bit about the hygiene. Nice to see you. Um, you know, I, I think the thing is, as much as I, I don't paint uh, things, that's not really what I'm about. I, I want to paint sensations and I want to paint feelings. I want to paint experiences. And so the wildflowers are for me just a, just a conduit for for that sense of colour uh, the sense of life in the landscape that's really what it's about um, if if you took a field of, of wild flowers you know just imagine it was like an orchestra right so with the orchestra you know you've got you've got your string section and your woodwind section and you've got your brass players and you've got your percussion players you know so just imagine that you're looking at a field like that and that it's like an orchestral symphony you know, you can't have, you know, the triangle and the timpani bashing away, you know, at every single second. But they they are, you know, when they come in, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite magic, you know, when 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 some of those instruments come in because they can add that that extra touch, that little bit of brilliance. And it's a bit like seeing something like yellow in a, in a field of green. You know, it's much more powerful sometimes than seeing a whole field of yellow, which becomes a little bit overwhelming. So let's go with that feeling that we're in the wildflower meadows and that we are thinking about how um, I've added a, uh, um, a glaze here of this dark green. So that's what's looking a little shiny there. I'm just seeing if I can get light in a bit better. Let me see. Um, it may or may not help. Um, what uh, that that green there is just a glaze. I'll go into making those things as well. So you know, it'd be lovely if uh, about next week and you know where we're going with this. That maybe I'll do a Zoom tutorial on painting wildflowers so I'll start with uh, a, a scene a, a picture of some sort and and go through the whole process and I might do that as a zoom demonstration so that we can maybe have you know have a real close look at, at what's happening um, and then maybe doing doing a, a series on that and you can then paint along with me so you know I'm just I'm just thinking about that at the moment and you know how to structure that so uh, I'll keep you posted so as I say I've added a slight uh, darker blue at the top here just to give it some weight we've got this beautiful mid-tone blue that we added in yesterday we added that in and we've kept um, down here and you can I can see that on the camera but we've kept the dark values here, which uh, which is great. This is our original painting. Here and here is our original paintings. So uh, that's quite nice to, to still have some of that exposed. So our next stage really is to get some greens into here first. And um, so it looks messy for a start and then we'll just make it... So this is a green just mixed up with cold wax. And I'm using a roller for this because I want to think compositionally how you might like that. Um, this is a just standing up so I can get that on there. So it's got nice juicy paint. And it's that real spring green colour.
if there's no paint coming up then you know I, I, I would need to mix more paint for that and I'm going to use my squeegee and I'm going to cut into that green now I usually have a cloth here um, because you know that's really nice but let's just cut into some of that underpainting that we have and you know get right down to that dark layer I'll use the scratchy tool as well but I'll just get into this a bit first so I've just brought brought everything up quite high here um, as I said this was my falling off my bike experience where I actually was right in the grass really couldn't see anything else except the wildflowers so it gives us a lot of space to work with different techniques to build that up so I keep working like that just just scoring into that and you know we we could probably get a palette knife actually and just come in you see and just so we're now revealing that that darker background underneath so I use different ways of getting in there palette knife is one and I like it but I don't want you know I don't want too many and we've also got our scratchy tool if you want a finer line and that's quite nice at the top to bring some finer lines in there and the heavier lines down the bottom so you vary the weight of your lines as you're doing that some places you know we're going to need some stems of um, some plants have got stronger stems you know like the um, uh, the what's it called the red campion and it has a sort of a dark purpley red stem so you know we might want a few places where we get where we think oh yes I could place a red campion there so you know those ones I might want to come out a little bit broader you know, and change the angles of what you do as well. Just sort of imagine, you know, imaginary paths through, through the grass. You know, maybe someone's walked through there at some stage. You know, that's quite nice to have different things going on as well. If it gets um, clogged up, just come in again with the green over the top. Okay, and you can bring that texture back in. Then you can still come back in if you want and scratch so that's always going to be there that darker layer has dried because it had the marble dust on it so you know we're just really just scratching into something that's there but that wasn't there you wouldn't be able to do it so it's good to build these things up in a kind of systematic way and uh, I might just cover that a little. It's looking a little too obvious. The thing is, just to keep it looking. I've kept some darks again at those corners in particular. I'm now going to get some pale blue. So this is the blue we had before which was the a mixture of the ice blue and just going to come down into here I'm just using the same colors as yesterday so I'm not introducing new colors into the color palette 
So this sort of feels a bit like the light coming across the field. So think of a directional flow of your light. So in this case, it's coming in from this way. So that light is hitting that wildflower meadow and coming across and it's shaded and darker there. So what I do is I wipe the roller I'm using a um, paper towel for this because I don't really want any moisture on the roller. Clean off as much of the white as possible. And I'm going to take off any excess, any excess paint that I've just put down. I can take off there, like so. It's very hard to keep these rollers clean, isn't it? <laughs> so um, I'll turn it around your way so you can see. That's what it's looking like. Okay, right, that roll is clean because I need to come in now and re-roll that dark blue into the light blue from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to have to roll that way. And then I'm all set to put the flowers on. I just wanted to show you how the um, background setup for what we're doing is so important. Um, you know, rather than just launching into just painting the flowers, I really spend a long time with the uh, environment, really, that I'm going to be placing those flowers. So now I'm coming down with the roller this way, adding that blue. into the painting a little more you can see where all the scratch marks are here that it has met you can see the little indentations and these are all these lines are coming through So now I've got a nice base at the top there. Now we get rid of the roller marks in the middle there. Again, clean the roller as much as possible anyway. What it starts to do is it starts to get a feeling of light across across the meadow, which I, uh, you know, they sort of get those little bands of mist early morning. It's just stunning, and I like to capture that if I can. So I've cleaned this roller again. I'm gonna go in with that lighter bluey green. Put that back in there. Again, like a sheet of mist. The wiping thing becomes a bit annoying. If you had more rollers, I guess you could treat yourself to not having to do that all the time. I've got lots of rollers, but they're all dirty. <laughs> so <laughs> it's my own fault. Just write these little bits of 
paper in a minute. Right, that's looking um, absolutely beautiful in here. It's beautifully blended. So I just need to soften this where the light is hitting. There, so that's just softened and it's a beautiful sort of background now to lay out um, you know to lay a wildflowers on top of that in fact in a funny sort of a way I'm I'm happy with it just now like this I, I could live with that I just think that's you know um, just so soft and gentle and speaks of speaks of the meadow without all the color but anyway we're doing color so let's get let's do that And clean these rollers and I'm going to get rid of these dirty cloths and I'll show you where I've got to so you can see it properly I'll raise you up just a tad there we go oh hi <laughs> oh hello Angus nice to see you hi David how's the mumbles okay a little bit different to Port Talbot anyway. <laughs> so um, you can see the, uh, it's almost like a burnishing that goes on to uh, to really push the colour into the paper here or the multimedia board and you know I've really pushed all that pigment and paint into that marble dust so it gets this very deep, very rich colour and also the scratching through to the underneath layers. All right. So that's that's really the setup. So the, the first two lessons we've had on this subject were really to set this board up to do what we're going to do now with the with the pigments and with the colour. So I usually just have a little change around here. So I've thrown out the rags and I'm going to be using a new palette paper because, you know, this just all gets all very messy and confusing. And, you know, our colours were quite... Um, quite limited really on the wildflower meadow because we just had red campion dandelion we had a little bit of uh what did we have we're bluebells and a little bit of the vetch the um sort of purpley blue vetch which we didn't have very much of it. it was it was very small but i did pick a couple of dandelions that's the kind of color we're looking at and you know, just looking at them too at different stages of their lives, you know, they're not always that, are they? You know, they can be that and they can be the white fluffy things, which I didn't bring into the studio because you know what they are. So, uh, you know, painting things in their different stages is also, you know, quite, you know, quite authentic rather than always painting the pretty ones just paint paint the in-between ones as well it just looks more authentic so um hi helene nice to see you nice that you could make it so i've got my little friends there my little dandelions and they're all looking a bit kind of um shriveled up that's good i like that so how am i going to paint these dandelions so thinking back to different techniques that we use right at the beginning with uh, the dandelion um, prints and things that we made. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I've made a little stencil. Okay, so I've made a stencil which I can use for either various stages of the dandelions or um, your vetch is going to be pink. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, you can get yellow vetch as well, by the way, Georgina. <laughs> it doesn't have to be purple. Uh, these uh, these shapes are going to be quite useful for creating uh, some of these dandelion shapes on. So let's get on with that colour and let's get on with the pigments. I'm using Pan Pastel. These they, You can't even see what these are because they're so dirty. All right, and it's back to front, so it's hopeless. Uh, Pan Pastel, uh, I, I won't hold it vertically because there's a lot of powder in there. But uh, these things are great. Jackson's Art, you can buy them from. So I've just got basic colours. I've just got the yellow and I've got a magenta one here as well, which I quite, I use this a lot. 
and um, sometimes I have an orange but I'm not using orange today but I'll use the yellow and the pink mainly I also have a blue which is very very nice a bit of an ultramarine blue um, so those are the sort of powder pigments we're just going to stick with something quite basic till we get you know get the hang of it hi Aileen um, so uh, you know that's um, that's how we're going to add that on top and we will use in this case we will use the cold wax medium as a binder so that's what's really going to hold the pigment on the page just try to get some out and that's the, yeah so that's the binder that we need and yeah let's just try and see what um you know what what we want here composition wise and how that's going to bring it back down again sorry guys um and how that's going to work right uh composition wise i have got this very you know very loose tree here so you know i might start with just using a little yellow i am off on the side there with the with the colors but um Just get some yellow going there just to be sort of the base of. I've just uh, added a tiny touch of blue into the yellow so it's a slightly greeny yellow. Just gives me a little bit of a, so that's it there. Just it gives me a little bit of room to work with. If I need to go brighter, I've got some option of that. It's dropping off so um when we think about the heights of things you know the the fluffy dandelions perhaps might be a, a little higher in this and as you get lower you might have the buttercup and you know you'll have the big dandelion flowers perhaps down here it might be might be best to sort of start with the buttercup i think because they just hide um they just kind of hide in the bottom. I'll just get some more yellow out. So never know how much of this stuff we need. Okay. So I've got, uh, I've actually changed my yellow. I've got Yellow Lake, Michael Harding's Yellow Lake there. I just needed something a little brighter for this. So the uh, buttercup is only just uh, just a few things. So I'll just pop them in. You know, they tend to, just using the side of my palette knife, you know, they, they just pop up here and there. I'm not too worried about, I just need to make sure that they're placed in an artistic manner. Not So it's nice to paint things in groups, you know, if, if one's there, you know, there might be sort of a little group of them. That's lovely if it's nice, thick, juicy paint. That also is nice. So I've kind of kept that species a little down at that level. And then, of course, we're going to have big dandelions in here as well. So we don't need to overdo it just yet. Um, let's do one of the big dandelions then. So, you know, here's one. Okay. And... What I'm going to do is, um, just going to paint the guy. This is a bit messy. I have to wear gloves for this, guys. Um, so, yeah, just paint this fella here like this. And perhaps on a spare piece of paper first, um, you know, take a print. So that's got in, rid of any excess wax. I keep that because that's my little thing. So now I'm I might make a print of that dandelion. Maybe down here. Just 
Is that unmute? Yeah. Dip them into the paint. I might have a couple. That's a lesser one, which is good. You don't want them all the same. They won't be all the same. It's quite quite good, really. But um, what it's just doing is it's just giving me some form to play with. And it's quite nice to see, um, you know, what, what colour the stems are too, actually. So they have a little bit of pinky, pinkiness to the stem. So, you know, that I don't, I'll add another one up here, I think. You can see. I mean, I'll add more paint onto these, but what this is doing is it's just giving me just giving me something it's just giving me something to start with and because the form is accurate I can add extra things later now this one is a kind of shriveled up one I might need a tiny touch of orange so I'm using a Williamsburg orange but I've got a Jackson's orange but it's really drips everywhere so I prefer this Williams one Williamsburg one it's now a golden company products and you know you can see really that that's focused very much at the top so um, this one might be you know when dandelions are out, they're just out, aren't they? They're everywhere at the moment. They are just the star of the show. And bees love them, so we know we love them too. I love adding this uh, this orange against the yellow. I just find that really exciting. Um, you know, there might be something here. Paint over that buttercup. So I'm using... Using these things quite, um, being quite bold, really. Be quite bold as I go on. I start softly and then I get really excited. When I see the colour coming down. I think, oh yeah, lots of these guys everywhere. Yeah, I'm trying to sort of let the colours um, of the green really come through from underneath. I'm not trying to obliterate, I'm not sort of painting so heavily that I'm losing uh, what's underneath. So I'm just really trying to lay uh, that quite gently on. And sometimes I'll even take the roller and, um, you know, give it a, just a soft roll. Because I don't want to be too heavy handed. With the squeegee can squash things completely. So say I wanted to just spread that a little, you know, I'll just take that roller like so. And roll some of the colours across there. So I find the palette knife for this quite um quite useful. Now once we've got some of that um color and wax down we can add pigment onto that as well so this area here where there's a bit of um nondescript stuff you know i can just now come in and add that pigment this is a yellow ochre pigment I can add that pigment. Now I can either put a paper down and press that in or just go directly in with the roller. I quite like using the roller because I can use anything that I pick up on the roller. I can, you know, I can put it elsewhere. It's just a lovely way of just, just dotting that color around. Just keeping that moving, not disturbing the green, not painting over too much stuff, just keeping it very light. As I said, you know, it's just really balanced in my hand. And um, I 
it's nice how the white in the buttercups has also um, started to spread a little. I might just roll a little colour on the edge of that there. Come down here with it. Maybe come up there with it. When you know what's on your roller, you become a little bit more confident. But at the beginning, just, you know, just tread very gently. You can just end up with blobs everywhere with um, with this. So just, especially when the paint is quite juicy. But it's quite nice to have that reflected colour in places. Just to give you an idea anyway of how to build up these wild flowers. So I might put in a tiny touch of uh, cornflower blue, which would be the vetch, or it could be the campion, because we've got the magenta. So I'm just using a Winsor & Newton magenta. And I tend to use a, a different palette knife for each colour that I'm using. I'll, I'll show you down here. So I've got an orange palette knife and a green palette knife, and then I'll have a magenta palette knife. So I can keep my colours, you know, as I want to mix them quite easily available. So mix up that magenta. We know that that Ragged Robin was quite a strong colour, so had a lot of the pink and it's just sitting outside my studio there smiling at me. Hi. Campion. So this one I might use a little brush for. Uh, because it's quite um, quite a strong colour. And the, the form of these things, they tend to grow upwards. So I probably want a stem of some sort. And then I might choose to literally do how it grows on there. As I say, these are a really bright flower. So you, know, you can decide on how much of this in your painting you need, if you need it at all. Um, but I wanted to show you another thing with that. Sometimes at the base it's a bit darker, just add a tiny bit more purer colour at the base of this um, and then kind of get more. Adventurous as I get to the top of the plant. Well, a little bit lighter, I should say. Just one way of looking at it. I could do it as a total abstract and not worry about too much about thinking about the actual flowers, but thinking more or less about the feeling of the... Um, feeling that they give uh, next to the yellow. I'm just going to get in there with a palette knife and it might strengthen these up a bit, you see. Sometimes a little bit isn't enough. There need more of it to make it more believable. And uh, you know, if it's just too minuscule, it just looks like it was an accident. And now I'm just sort of blending some of the yellow and the pigment into that pink. And it's creating a lovely transitional color rather than just the bright pink on its own almost looks like foxgloves. It's a good technique for foxgloves when when they come out. We haven't got them yet, but 
they will be out soon. Now, because we've got this um, going all the way up here, you know, we don't want to forget about the fact that, you know, we need to take it right up into that skyline. Okay. So what, very often, you know, you see these sort of tendency is to put things down sort of low. But actually, you know, we can come right up, right up, particularly since I was on the ground, so looking up. So I'm going to bring these, and if again, you know, we've got this green coming through, so I'm not obliterating the green. So I'm going to bring that pink right up into the, the sky. That makes that so much more interesting when you can do that, because that's what sits there. Okay, that's the campion, and I might use um you know the scratchy tool perhaps to bring in a few of the stems uh, i'm not using the palette knife because the palette knife is too heavy um, and i like this finer line so that's looking great um, just bring some of these stems down dandelions have leaves as well so i probably need to look at a few of those but that that has um you know sort of made some sense of them as a form by adding by adding the scratchy tool and let's um get some green and put in some just a few dandelion leaves Just where I might want to pop them down just at the bottom. So it's a different green going on. That's that's often quite nice. If you remember the shape of them was like that. You can kind of think about the shape a little bit. Don't need it everywhere, but it's quite nice to have a few where the dandelions are. And also if you wanted to cover something up, it's also a useful point to come back in with the green. Now to come back up and cover up some of that. Okay. The other thing I do is I also do come back in with the green. And uh, I think partly because there's always green in plants, but, you know, some of that pink you see I'll come back in with the green into some of that so it's like things are overlapping so you need, can have a sense of um, stems and branches or whatever coming over the pink as well as the pink itself it kind of pushes some of the the pink things back into the painting as well so you know you work backwards and forwards from different spatial spatial levels so they're not just sitting out there like a sore thumb okay and the scratches also help to tell you where you might want to um, want to do that as well Okay, our wildflower meadow is coming along. Now we're going to add the white dandelions as our last thing for the day. So we take our stencil. We're going to think about this in different ways. With different stencils actually, because we've got the ones that are either positive, so we could we could paint these stencils themselves, roll these and then use that as part of our painting so we'll do one of those or i can do it with a um a brush so i'm just going to paint the paint paint the stencil
just pop it down somewhere. Can roughly do that. Giving us just a gentle shape. So I don't have to actually paint the thing. The little green to come in and scratch that out a little so it's a it's a it's um it's there but it's 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 not so obvious that you've uh, gone in and painted tried to paint a dandelion and then it went badly wrong um which used to happen to me all the time now the other way i do it is then i use the stencil as well i enjoy doing that so i'll get the brush A bit more white paint, sorry. Go through so much white at this stage because there's a lot of different things to add in. Okay. So I can decide where I might like this and say I wanted to... Um, wanted to overlap something. Say I wanted to overlap this yellow dandelion and that. And I've got a brush here that I've cut the end off. So that cutting off the end of the brush just softens that brush a little. It's like a they they have a deer foot stippler that you can use if you're a stencil artist. And you know, I would just add keep adding a few of these um different uh I've cut out different shapes as well, so some are not quite as um they're quite nice to put the dandelions higher up actually. They're all in different stages of of um, falling apart. They're all going to seed, I should say. And again, you might want to. Make sure that they have a stem. So it makes sense of, of that. Might do one where I leave the green in the middle. So just do the outside. I just left that green there in the center. You can paint them in different ways, um, you know, um, change the colour slightly too. You know, sometimes I might do a green one, particularly, you know, or a bluish one, particularly if it's in the shade. You know, you don't want to, you know, have something, you know, too obvious. But what I have found is they're all roughly the same size. I've gone around and measured them <laughs> and picked them and there's not much difference in size in the seed head so that's quite useful. I mean you could paint alliums the same way if you were doing your own cottage garden. Uh, that's um, you know um, you know that's quite nice too but you know you can just paint different parts of the stencil you don't have to paint the whole stencil you know just some just give some little indications of you know these little flowers so excellent well i think that's um that's good now uh, i'll have a look at your questions just quickly before i go and do you think good quality soft pastels of sennelier are a good substitute for pan pastel yes good um pastels are, are great but pastel has a different binder to pan um 
hard the soft pastels have a different binder to what they use in pan pastel so i would recommend probably using something that has quite a good and strong color otherwise the color isn't strong enough in the in in the um compressed pastel um you you'll just find it's a little bit chalky that's all that would be my only comment with that any other questions before we head off you're prepared to try it Hey, super, super. Okay, well, um, thank you for joining me on a Sunday. I know it's very strange to be here on a Sunday. <laughs> very strange not to be singing, but it appears that we're not going to be allowed to sing for some while yet, which is very unfortunate. But anyway, not to worry. I will send you um, a message about the Zoom um, sort of um, a, a basic session for Zoom so that we can go step by step do it together and maybe paint our own little you know wildflower painting which will be really a lot of fun and uh any questions just fire them here and i'll answer them at the end if not um thank you for joining me it's nikki heenan artist see you later thank you bye